Ephesians 6, the first four verses. Beginning at verse 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. We're going to pray at this time. Our Father, thank you for the word of God. We thank you again for the privilege that we all share, Lord God, in coming together and worshiping you. Thank you, Father, for the freedom. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the assignments. Thank you for the people of God. And Lord God, to take control and minister further to us. And let us let the bread be broken. And Lord God, let each one be a partaker according as you see we stand in need of. Thank you. Take control of the atmosphere. Fill it with the presence of God. And Lord, we'll give you praise. We invoke your presence now. We need you, Lord God, to, to, to rule and reign and let minds be at peace and hearts be at peace. Uh, even now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, and we'll give you glory and honor for it's in your precious son named Jesus. And we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We've been talking <clears throat> about... <clears throat> children who are angry with their fathers. And that's the theme that he gave me. We uh, on, after the introductory week, the fourth, I believe, fathers that don't keep their promises. We talked about the fathers that abuse their children. We also talked about the fathers that abuse the children's mothers. And on last week, we talked about fathers that abandon altogether their children. So this week, we'll briefly talk uh, just a statement or two about the fathers that do not keep their promises. Again, the subject is not fathers. The subject is children. Children that are angry with their father. That's the uh, uh, theme that God gave. I mean, so we spend a bit of time talking about the fathers, and now we, after a brief statement or two about these fathers that don't keep their promise, we want to go and talk about the uh, results or the effects of the broken promises in children, how it affects the children, and all of these various fathers um, it can produce anger in the children. All seven of these that we mentioned, it can produce a certain amount of anger in their children, sons and daughters. And the Lord is so gracious. It is his desire to help us not only immediately, but in the long run. And God sees things he looks down the road and sees 5, 10, and 15, and 20 years what is going to take place and what can or should take place. And sometimes we may tend to look at things uh, in a uh, short-range uh, way. But God looks at it both now and later. And he has the capacity to look hundreds of years down the road and tell you what's going to happen. But um, so I want to encourage you to give full ear to what he's saying. Uh, I have discovered that uh, the word is so true, and I know you have as well. It's so true. And God is a God that is preventative in his dealings. He always wants to pre prevent things that can happen. So he gives us information or insight, and as we follow along with him, take him at his word, he will literally prevent things that could happen. And uh, this here is a part of that. And sometimes um, a person may 
uh, experience anger, and if anger is not dealt with, uh, there are long-term effects of anger. It can affect a person's physical in such a way until there's a constant hypertension, there's a constant um, uh, sometimes stomach problems and sometimes digestive problems. And the problems can be many and varied that can take place in a person's life uh, when there are negative emotions. Anger within itself is not all negative. There is positive anger. Anger, as we said, is one of those emotions that God has given, just like fear and guilt and all those other things here. So when it's healthy, uh, it can produce that which is helpful. And it can prevent people from uh, uh, being long-term in situations. It can also uh, open the door for creativity from God. Healthy anger. But then there is uh, the anger that we're speaking of is not the healthy anger, but it's that anger which settles and lodges in a person's being months and years at the time until it gets to the point where it begins to weave itself into a person's personality, causing them to be either harsh, critical, cynical or whatever one might think and so when God is dealing with character it's healthy for him to uh, deal with root problems many times we look in the word and we want to change we want to be whole and sometimes we really don't know the root of what's going on or the root of our problems so we've tried to share some of the things that uh, can take place in a life when anger is at the root for a long, prolonged period of time. God cares for us. And I look at it as a God that cares so much for his people. And he doesn't just look at uh, maybe tomorrow or today I'm going through some financial crisis and I'm worked up about it. But he's looking at something far beyond there. He's looking at a time when uh, a situation may cause me to draw closer to him and to hear and to fully begin to uh, yield over to the things that he's saying. And it will yield as we yield over to him and he's able then he works the character in our lives so that in the long term we are made the better and more people are helped as a result of his doing. And so we want to encourage you not to look at so much as what's going on in your life momentarily. Uh, it's easy to think that, wow, when is God going to do this for me? Or when is God going to change this for me? God is a God that cares so much for you, your loved ones and, and, and our loved ones that, that he, he knows. He knows the future. And uh, so if he wants to deal with uh, rooted anger or buried resentments, then let's allow him to do so. He is the Lord. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. We are his subjects. We are his children. David said we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We belong to God. Paul said you are not your own, but you are bought with a price. So that means we owe our allegiance to God. And if he wants to go to areas in our lives and heal the root cause, then it is a wise person that says, God, have your way in my life. And he's the wise master builder. And the Bible says, except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain. That builds. Hallelujah. I'm so glad for Jesus. 
I'm so glad that he looks beyond my fault and sees my need. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, one would even dare to die. But God displayed his love toward us while we were in a sinful state. Hallelujah. So if he did that for us when we were sinners, how much more will he help us now that we are his children? Hallelujah. So talking further about fathers that don't keep their promises. There are fathers, and I remember falling into that category. I wanted so bad, much to help my children at the early part of um, stepping out full time. And um, I would make statements and try to keep them, but some of those promises I couldn't keep. And uh, they all have an effect. It can affect the child's faith in him if too many of those broken promises take place. But thank God for healing. My God, hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. There are many things that can affect uh, when we make promises, when fathers make promises and mothers as well. Because the text here also can imply parents rather than just fathers alone. And uh, so when we make um, promises, there should be the added statement, if the Lord wills. There's safety in that. Isn't that right? Trying to explain to the children that there are things that can uh, interfere with the promises. Unforeseen circumstances. Isn't that right? Calamities, tragedies, things can happen beyond our control that can hinder our words. And so we, when we make promises, we must be sure to say, if the Lord wills, I had to learn that. I was making promises and I couldn't keep them and uh, uh, things would happen where I couldn't uh, bring it to pass. And, uh, uh, but uh, I am so grateful that the Lord began to teach us that you, you know, always say, if the Lord wills, I will do thus and so. And uh, so there are fathers out there, they mean well, saved and unsaved alike. They mean well. Some may do it just to get the children off their back or whatever. Uh, um, Some may do it to impress them. But for whatever reason, it can have damaging effects on the children's faith in days ahead. If they do not begin to see God as a different father. God is a different father. He he, he is a promise keeper, and we can trust him. And, but yet, sometimes the children of fathers that, will not, that don't keep their promises struggle to believe that God is different and will keep his promises because those things have been rooted uh, in their lives, and that's been the image that's been before them for years, so they struggle. But when we get more into the word of God, let it become a part of us so that faith will take root in our lives. We'll begin to see the changes that we long to see. God, and we talked about how images of God can be distorted because of what children see in their parents and fathers. So 
um, that's basically what, where I was coming from there. But I want to share with you just a few things briefly, won't be before you long. I, um, you know, we've talked a bit about those, some of the consequences, long-term uh, um, effects of anger in children as a result of what the fathers have done, abuse and uh, abandonment, uh, forsaken, broken promises, uh, neglecting fathers that uh, cannot uh, stand up, or fathers that are weak, and the, the list goes on. But the effects are very similar. It breeds anger in the child, especially they, 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 are not, they cannot understand why this is happening or why the father or the parent uh, would, would do this. And they, they are supposed to be the ones that are, uh, are more knowledgeable and, and have the understanding and to help me. And so as child, they grew up with that. And if those issues are not corrected in time, it begins to slowly shape the child and they will run into difficulties. But as I was praying and talking to the Lord, the Lord said uh, forgiveness is still the way. No matter how long it has taken place. And we'll touch on buried anger and buried resentments because buried anger is a little different from the anger that's in the forefront of our minds. Uh, anger that's in the forefront of our minds. Somebody said, who are you angry at? They go, oh, I'm angry at Joe. Joe did this and, and it was so wrong and I just feel like he should have been dealt with. But buried anger is sometimes people are not able to put their finger on why they're angry. All they know is they are responding in a way that says to others, you're angry. And they don't know unless they really get to the Lord in most cases, not every case, uh, where it came from. And God wants to uh, take the time and say to us, I want to share with you some, not all, where the root of the problem lies. What's been hindering your life? so that we can allow him to get it right and things will begin to open. I remember he said to me, he said, son, I'm going to heal you and I'm going to bless you. It was in that order. Blessings don't come before the healing, right? All right. And I tried to get him to bless me before he healed me, before I understood that I needed healing. And... um. But that didn't work out. But I thank him. He is such a wise God. When he takes you through, you have to appreciate him more. You, you, you just have to. He's just so wise in his dealings. And he's so full of compassion. You, you, you got to love him. He's just good. He's a wonderful savior. And I, I find myself thanking him. But, he, uh, but forgiveness is so important. Forgiveness puts you in the stream or back in the stream of his flow, back in the stream of his healing power, back in the stream of his blessings, forgiveness. And uh, so we want to think in terms of no matter how long it's been, God, God, God doesn't have a problem. He can, he can heal. He can go back. He transcends time. He can go back. 20 and 30 years, just as quick as he can go back a few weeks ago. He can. The way we're wired, the way we're built, made up with the brain, there are things are just that can be stored in our memories. And when there's a need for healing or when something that's stored in our memory gets triggered by a similar situation, it triggers a response. And sometimes the response can be greater than what stimulated. I remember one time when that happened to me, I, uh, uh, me and my first wife, late wife, we, we had a disagreement and, and it, it wasn't all that. And I, I couldn't, but it just left me 
so bothered. I couldn't shake it. And it just stayed on. And I went to the Lord. I said, well, Lord, what? why does, is this bothering me so? I, it wasn't all that. I mean, but it was bothering me. But what happened is he tapped into a root and a memory for I had some anger. And when that happened, there was more than just the thing that had happened to me. The memories, the emotions came up. And so, because I wanted to know, he told me. But then God says, and I'm going to get too long in that, he just says, I was in prayer for about an hour and a half, and I'm just saying, Lord, what is it? What, why, why did I respond? So, uh, so my, my response was out of proportion. I, I'm not getting that. But I remember a preacher told, said, he was preaching one day, and he said, when the response is greater than the stimulus, there's a problem on the inside. And I said, oh, Lord, there's a problem here somewhere. But the great God, who loves me so much and loves you, told me what it was, and he began to set me free. He delivered me from a root of anger. Oh, my God, I tell it everywhere I get the chance to tell because I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't do it myself. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He certainly don't favor me. He'll do it for anybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I think partially what the reason that he did it for me is so I can tell others. Isn't that right? The Bible says, Paul said, God comforts us in all of our tribulations. That we might be able to comfort others that are in any trouble. So it's not only about him just dealing with us. Down the road, you'll have a chance to talk to somebody else about the same thing that God did for you. Hallelujah. You'll understand it a little more then. And say, ah, I see. Hallelujah. There are marriages here that God is going to use people to heal others. He may be teaching you concepts of love. And you may not understand it, but he's teaching concepts of love so that you will embrace them and be able to share with others how to love one another. Isn't that right? God is good, saints. And he loves us so much. So forgiveness is God's way. Forgiveness is God's way. It is his way. And if, as we choose as an act of our will, choose to forgive, God will take you up. I remember there was a lady we were visiting, witnessing in the uh, villages of the park. And we all, there was probably three or four teams out there knocking doors and witnessing that Saturday. And then uh, my wife and uh, a couple others got went and knocked on the door, and they ministered to this lady. And this lady had had some traumas that they were so devastating that she said, I, I can't, I just can't forgive. I just can't. She says, I want to, but I just can't. It's just, you don't understand what took place. You don't know how that hurt me. So they were praying for her, and they talked to her about it, and, but, and she was crying. She just was tears because she just felt like, I can't forgive. I, I, I want to. I, I love God. I want to, but she couldn't. So uh, we were coming in, and uh, I mean, finishing up, and they, they kind of got my attention and says, uh, there's a lady here, here, they want you to just join us in prayer. So we did. And so 
um, the Lord just told me to take authority over the spirit of unforgiveness. And so we did. And it broke that thing. And the lady was able to forgive. And as she forgave, God began to heal her. God is a good God. God is such a good God. Sometimes Satan will stand in the way of people forgiving because he knows that's God's way. So he'll stand in the way and he'll, he'll make the reason why they shouldn't so strong. And most of the time a person don't know who is behind it. But I'm exposing the way he operates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is for us. And we can always forgive. And even when we get to the point where we say, God, I want to so bad, but there's something hindering me. Help me. God will break that thing. I remember another situation that we were praying for somebody. And these are situations that I'm hoping that will trigger a response if anyone has a difficulty forgiving. Um, I was praying for this particular person and we shared with them. And Ed Tyson was with us, with us. Those of you that remember Ed Tyson. We were there uh, and two, a couple of us praying years ago. Long, long years ago. I mean, so uh, we asked the person to say that it's important for you to forgive in order for the flow of God to come. And they literally couldn't even say it. Every time they would open their mouth to say it, it wouldn't come out. Now, I, I don't want to say a lot about that because I don't want to spook anybody. But, I just, but again, we took authority over the power that stood in the way. Broke it. And the person was able to forgive. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is for us. I, I want to tear down any excuse when people say I can't forgive. Because God can help us. Isn't that right? God will help us. He loves us too much. So forgiveness. Let's keep that in mind. Then let me go on briefly here. Buried anger. He began to say buried anger. And he said there's some signs. And I, and I said Lord. Lord. How can a person know when there's buried anger? So he directed me to a website. You know, God can use anything he wanna, right? You know, you know, I, I be I'll be honest, I, I like to hear him talk to me and tell me. But sometimes it's like he said, just go. To the website. I'm going to talk to you through that. So he did. This was one of those occasions. Signs of buried resentment. And you better buckle your seatbelt here. Because this, is, this is a little bit tough. One he said. Or the, it says procrastination. Everybody know what procrastination is right? Procrastination in. The. Completion of tasks, especially ones you don't like or want to do. Procrastination. Now, please, I am not saying if you procrastinate, and that's the only sign that I'm mentioning, that you have buried anger. So kind of try to take them all, all right? <laughs> take them all. And if, 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 uh, if you get at least three of these... <laughs> then uh, you might want to let him visit you. The second one is habitual lateness. Habitual lateness. Is that anybody? All right. The third one. Sarcasm, cynicism, flippancy. This is all one. Sarcasm. Cynicism, that's where you kind of believe that people are all selfish. It's, it's a form of skepticism. You're not trusting people. You know, it's like, you know, you look at people and, and, and you 
you judge their motives, it's a lack of trust. So you said, people are basically all selfish. You get cynical, isn't that right? Or flippancy. Flippancy has to do with lack of respect or seriousness. It's like, it's like a person act like nothing is serious. This is all, these are all one, the sarcasm, uh, cynicism, and flippancy. These are all just on one area here. So uh, you do find people that way that just like, they act like, eh, life is happy-go-lucky, you know, and, and uh, they say things that just, you know, kind of loose and flippant, not serious. That could also be a sign. All right. So we mentioned Baird, anger, sarcasm. The third one is, no, I'm sorry, we mentioned habitual lateness, that was two. Sarcasm and so on, that was three. Number four, frequent sighing. Frequent sighing. <sighs> let, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I remember I found myself, and, and, and Juan, you can laugh at that, she can laugh. I would be saying, <sighs> you know, uh, <sighs> and so um, I said, well, why am I sighing? What is it? And um, <laughs> but I found out some of y'all look at me funny, but I want to you know, <laughs> You say, man, you got that? Well, no, nah, not quite. <laughs> but I'm sharing with you how you have to let the Lord deal with the heart. I was all right until he began to show me the symptoms. I said, wait a minute here. I, you know, I was like, wait a minute here, Lord. I mean, <laughs> But it's all good. I, I tell you, saints, I got three of those. I close my book. I put on me some worship music. I say, Lord, it's me and you here. I got a problem somewhere. And God... Like he was right there waiting. And I come up out of there. I just was so silent. I didn't know what to say. I said, God. And he went back to my dad. God is so good. I told you you had to put your seatbelt on. Now, now, I did tell you, right? <laughs> I don't, I, I don't mind talking about myself, positive or negative. You know what I'm saying? Because my life is an open book. I have nothing to hide. I try to live for Jesus. Isn't that right? Amen. Nothing to hide. So, all right. That's uh, frequent sighing. So if you find yourself you frequently late or if you uh, find yourself, you get tasked, you, 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 you won't. Take care of the task. You promise and you plan, and you say, "I'm gonna get to it." And, and uh, if that, if you, by the time you get to this frequent sighing, you find yourself saying, oh, "You know, you don't know where it's coming from." And then and here's another one: smiling while hurting. I said, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> All right, y'all. Another one is frequent 
disturbing or frightening dreams. Sometimes dreams, are, it can be nightmares or so on, sometimes can be an indication of buried anger or resentment. And one other, one other, excessive inability, no, excessive irritability over trifles. What do you mean? Things of little value or importance just irritate it so easy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like if a person go to put the key in the door and it doesn't work right. And the <laughs> little things, little trifles, little things that's not the big things. So if you find that, if you got at least three of those, bow your heads with me and we're going to pray. And the Lord is going to help us. Come on, let's give God a praise. He's a worthy. <laughs> Somebody says sometime a change of environment may help. A little exercise, physical activity, the workout, and working out. Challenge of thinking, that's another one. They say suggest practice relaxing, you know, resting. Maybe arts, creative art. There are things that they suggest that you do, but uh, another one is just practice being thankful in spite of it. Just practice thanking the Lord. And uh, my, my mentor was, uh, that's one of the things that I, I, I admired about him when uh, I first came into the faith. And uh, he would not let two or three minutes go by without saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I thought, this man praised God so much. What, you know? But he had developed an attitude of just praising God. Every two or three minutes, he'd say, Hallelujah. I'd ride with him. So if he hear this on YouTube, then he know, he know I'm telling the truth. So, and he won't be mad about it because he knows that's a compliment to him. So, uh, but he would just... Hallelujah. Two or three minutes would pass by. Glory to God. He had developed that from his young life and ministry. God had told him the importance of praise. And so he began to just inculcate it, begin to put it, up, make it a part of his being. And uh, it, it paid off. It really paid off. I was like, wow. I don't know if I can do that, but that is, that is a really good habit, you know. To just praise God. Praise God. Because he's worthy. The Bible says. From the rising of the sun. To the going down of the same. The Lord's name. Is to be praised. So we praise him. We develop an attitude. Just praising God. Then, 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 then ingratitude can't get in. Isn't that right? So let's take a moment and thank the Lord. Hallelujah Jesus. Thank you Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. You are so good. We love you, Jesus. We really appreciate your mercy. My heart is just overjoyed with thanksgiving for God. To see how much he cares for us. To see how much he uh, looked beyond our faults. And see our need. He never condemned me all the while. He's a good God. Who wouldn't serve God? Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said I wouldn't keep you long. I intend not to keep you long. So I'm going to ask George to please come to the keyboard and I want you to think about what was said. And um, just allow Jesus to minister further to us. He loves us.
Thank you, Father. Amazing grace. Let's, let's, we want to do a little bit of that. Amazing grace. Amazing grace shall always be my song. was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. But there's one thing I know. He loves me beyond. Hallelujah. I wonder if you would stand with me as we sing that one more time. Amen. Grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I don't know. I do not know. Just why he Just came. why he came to, to love, love me so. There's so. one thing I know. Me Look beyond, beyond all, my all my fault and saw my need. Let's sing this together. What are you going to do? 